Welcome to PPR podcast number 48. My name is Paul. His name is Bert. Bert is wearing a PPR lid. I am wearing PPR attire. You can get it from the PPR Pro Shop, the prepixreport.com. Items go quickly, so uh, please order yours today for the start of the season. Bert, would you like to introduce the man in the middle? I would. Caden Dawson, tight end DN, UC, recently committed to the fine Boise State University. And where did he commit? Right here on KUSI. Which we will always forever be in your debt, young man, to share that special moment with us. It means a ton. Could you tell us when you were standing on the patio here at KUSI with, uh, with Brandon Stone, what was going through your mind? I mean, there was a lot going through my mind, but for the most part, I was just really happy to have everybody that, like, I know I chose to be there with me, to be there with my decision. I just thought it was nice to have my coaches there. They've been there since I was five. So, I mean, have my fiance there, my sister there. It was nice. Did you say your fiance? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I did, yes. Wow, fiance. congratulations. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Now, okay, that, that that's earlier in the game than, say, <clears throat> the average Joe. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, uh, well, so her and I are both Christian. Um, so where our plan is, is that she's going to move with me to wherever we're going. But I didn't want to put her in a bad position, uh, you know, temptation wise to be like, put her out there on her own. And if we wanted to move and she wanted to live with me, I wanted her to be my wife. Wow. So uh, you're a serious young man, obviously. Bert? Yes, sir. Yeah, Bert, uh, you're, uh, I could say with great uh, authority that you are the most serious of the three people in this Zoom cast right now. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't say a lot. Come on. Yeah, I, I know the bar is low, Kate. You're yeah. probably thinking, geez. Oh, he needs Nick James in here. <laughs> Bring it lower. All right, so well, well, well congratulations on that. And uh, uh, talk a little bit about the decision to go to Boise. I mean, for me, I felt like it was a no-brainer. You know, people, alumni that – either play football there or they just went to school there. I mean, coming back to work with the program. Um, I know there's some people who just did it to kind of just get hours in because they needed it for like credits or whatever. And then they ended up loving it. So they ended up staying and taking on a, like a coaching job or a directing job there. Um, yeah. The family atmosphere is something that I'm pretty familiar with. So, I mean, to have that there was a big plus. Yeah. I think one of the cool things in Boise is they, a lot of their coaches were players there before. So it's kind of like, like you said, they want to be there. Yeah. You, you think there's a future there. So that's always pretty cool. Did J.L. Skinner uh, show you around when you were there? He showed me a little bit. Um, I kind of had two hosts when I went there. It was him and then their like their star tight end, uh, Riley Smith. So I have a question for you because I always wonder this. Um, yeah. You're like 6'5", 230. I think you had 108 tackles last year, like 11 sacks. Um, one of the best DNs in the county. Why do I always hear tight end? I don't hear D end ever in the next level. Um, well, I, I did have a couple offers at the end and I was willing to go for either. It kind of just came down to my decision. And I don't know when I kind of sat there and I had a gut feeling, I just chose tight end. So that's honestly what I went with. That was like my deciding factor. And, and, just wait, just so you know, JL also told us he chose wide receiver when he went to Boise <laughs> and now he's probably gonna be a first rounder as a, you know, linebacker safety type. I mean, things change. I'm open to change whatever the team needs me to do. Right. I mean, what you say today doesn't necessarily three years from now when you were when you're six foot six, 260 pounds, maybe you might be an all conference defensive player. And, and then so be it. Right. Yes, sir. That's a possibility. Wow. What do you think of that? I like I was. I don't know, but it DM. makes me nervous when you keep calling me sir, because that makes me feel like I'm 100. I know it's that's the way you're rearing, but he's a DM. Why don't you tell him that story about where you just kept getting blocked and then you had to jump on the ball you know and you tackle somebody? Why don't after? you tell him? Why don't you tell him the story? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell this. <laughs> All right, so I have another question. So you know, one of my favorite players, if you watch this, is, is Sam Cooper. Obviously, you guys have been playing together since youth, pretty much, haven't you? Uh, yes, sir. Eighth grade. Yes, was, sir. was there any talk of you two maybe going to the same school? I mean, we pondered the idea. We always thought it would be fun. Like, especially when we were in eighth grade, because we are like, oh, we're going to go to the same college or whatever. But, I mean, things play out the way that they did. So, I mean, if he happens to end up picking up an offer and he comes, like, I'll be ecstatic. I'm going to be excited about it. But, I mean, wherever he does go, I'm going to wish him the best. The fact, I think you guys are just, the story we like to tell here is, it doesn't matter where you play your high school football. If you are a good athlete, you will be discovered, be it at Division 5, be it at Division 1. Mm -hmm. They will find you. And I think 
you're proof of that. University City, not the biggest of schools, and yet you're going to have two, if not more, prominent athletes getting their college education paid for by football. Uh, could you speak to that a little bit? Well, I think for me, it's kind of a little bit different of a situation because I met a lot of recruiters when I was at Lincoln my first two years. So carrying that over, I think maybe not while I play on the field, people have heard of me, but just me being at Lincoln and me meeting other recruiters that some people didn't know of me. Um, but I still even think for kids that go there, I mean, we have two we have two freshmen right now, uh, Toe and Dre Gardner, who have Division One offers to places like Nevada and Arizona. Um, I think it's honestly just the coaches and also the work ethic from the players. And just for the, everybody, Tote is Tay Lockett, right? Oh, no, 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 no. No? <laughs> are you um, Sam Harris? He, Sam Harris. Yeah. Also Harris. You just call him Tote. Nobody knows who Tote is. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, but, but you got your, you're focusing on the wrong part of that answer. I, can you talk a little bit about the decision to transfer? From, usually we're seeing everyone transfer into Lincoln. You transferred out. Explain why. Oh, for me, it was living situation. Uh, we ended up moving out of the area. So then we started looking at schools inside of our district, and UC ended up being one of the top ones on the list. And talk about the, the school's uh, similarities and differences. I think similarities is the type of relationships I have with the coach, very trusting. Um, they've coached me prior to me being in high school. Besides those two years I went to Lincoln, those are my coaches, so a lot of fam uh, familiarity there. Uh, and I think... I think the crazy thing is that the work, like the way that the program is run, going from, you know, a D4 team to a D1 team, I didn't see a lot of changes. I mean, maybe in the weight room, you don't have as high class of a weight room, but I mean, they just, they make do with what they have. So we, are you doing a lot of seven on seven? Do you take part in that a lot or no? Oh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm typically always there unless it's something um, where it was a conflict with like official visits. That's the only time I really miss. Because we had Zach Marshall on uh, a few weeks ago, right before he transferred and it's, you know, the other tight end, your contemporary in the county. Um, I mean, it's interesting now, seven on seven, guys don't worry about losing half their senior season transferring because you get so much exposure in seven on seven now. I think that's a lot. I mean, we, he's going to have a four or five week sit out, you know, automatic. Um, but kids don't really care now because you get so much exposure in seven on seven. Do you find that? I think for me, me personally, I haven't found that. Most of my stuff has been from like workout videos I send out or maybe like personal workouts where like they come and they watch me work out like in the morning or something like that something that we set up but i haven't seen i mean any attention from seven on seven now. so the, the, that poses a question uh, do to, does the contemporary recruit now do recruiting himself does his own searching does he recruit schools or is it still back like the way bert did it back in the day when all the recruiting was one way schools recruiting athletes or now do athletes take a more proactive role in their recruitment? I think a lot more people are taking a proactive role. I mean, especially with social media, you can put yourself out there and, you know, market yourself a lot better, I think, now that people are starting to understand how to use it. So I definitely think there's a mix between some people. Some people do it old school. Some people take proactive takes. So, so uh, just allow me a follow-up. Of course. Well, give us some tips. If I had to market myself out there, what, what, what are some of the things I should be doing? I definitely think like just reaching out to coaches, you can get their emails pretty easily. Like, especially when you meet them, make sure you get all their contact information. Cause I mean, whether or not to offer you after a first talk, you can still continue that relationship and build that. Cause I think that's a big thing to getting a scholarship is a lot of coaches want to get to know you. So if you get to that sooner or like sooner rather than later, the offer will probably be on the table sooner. So you're about, you guys are playing the kickoff classic against La Jolla, right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. And that's August 12th, so you're only about a month out. So what's what's the schedule for you now for the next month? I mean, we have summer training, so it's that every day. We have that for about three hours. Um, you know, probably stay either get there early or stay there later to get extra work in with Sam. Um, I'll figure that out with him. Me and him usually communicate with that pretty well. But probably, I mean, when do you guys start camp camp with pads and everything? I think that happens. So we have a retreat on July 29th, right when we come back from that. Wow, it's right around the corner, Paul. Yeah, you ready? I, I am. 44, I, the, I did the math, 45 days and counting, Caden. I don't know if I'm, I, if I'm right on that, but I think it is. 45 days until the first game. And it's actually I mean, seven days less better. if you if you're playing in the kickoff classic. Hmm. You want to ask your question? Should I ask my question? Yeah, let's get it out of the way. All right, Caden. You might, you might want to know, you might know this question. 
It's the first okay. time I asked it ever. <laughs> Besides okay. yourself, who's gonna? who would you put on the – I know it's early in the season and nobody's played yet, but it's a very hard thing for the staff here and they get a lot of negative feedback for it. I'm not involved with it at all. All right, will you stop with all that? All right, sorry. Who would be – give me your top five on the Silver Pigskin podium this year. Not counting yourself. You're not allowed to count yourself. Okay, I won't count myself. Right. Um, I'm definitely saying Sam. Uh, Sam Cooper for sure. That doesn't Sam surprise me. He's number one. I think I think he's probably most likely to win it. Um, if I had a ooh, five other guys though, I'll give it. I'll give it to some of my guys over at Lincoln. I think Josiah could be pretty. I think Josiah could get up there pretty good. Josiah Cox. Mm -hmm. um, I also think Chris Fewell might have a breakout year too, because I know he's putting in work. So I could see him possibly getting it. You got two more. You got two more picks, and you've already used up all your Lincoln picks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go Julian Sand. All right. All right. And. And then yeah, I'll throw Zach up there. I'll throw Zach Marshall up there. Wow. So you, I'll tell you, the two kids that get mentioned most, you left off. Yeah. You forgot Roderick Robinson. This is just going to make Rod work harder. <laughs> <laughs> and Trey Edwards, who are uh, one and two, the most often mentioned. But, hey, it's your pick. It's your, it's your interviews. We, uh, we'll put it up there. Uh, and I guarantee you there's some kid that we don't even know about right now. That's gonna there always is. Yeah, yeah. that's going to rush for 3,000 years. <laughs> I, I want to go back to the, to the top of this interview. Caden, uh, uh, I, I didn't know a lot about you, and I certainly didn't know that, uh, that you were. How old are you right now? I'm 18. So you're 18 years old, going on 30. Does that does that hard to be uh, a high school kid in today's environment where you have a you've you've established a path, you've made that path known to everybody. You're not shy about talking about that path, and yet sometimes people, you know, you you get made fun of or, or whatever. Uh, talk a little bit about walking with your head held high and not really caring what other folks say. You know, while it may not be the most common thing, I think people respect it in a way because I've never gotten like flack or made fun of because of it. Um, I just think the way that you carry yourself is how you're basically going to earn your respect because, I mean, a, a lot of people don't end up talking to me, to be honest, you know, whatever, whether it's they're scared to talk to me or whatever. So I try to make myself available to everybody. But, I mean, I feel like when people hear my story, they respect me more and they hear my reasons behind it. It's not just something that randomly happened or it was just, you know, of course, the decisions that, put me where I'm at. I'm going to go back. You know what I'm going to go back to since you went back? I'm okay. going to go back to the DN thing. Okay, go on. So if I ask Coach <laughs> if I ask Coach Lockett, would he say you should be able to, you should play DN going forward or tight end? I mean, I think I think he wants me to, but I think if you asked him, he'd give a politically correct answer and say, I just want him to play whatever he wants to play. Oh, my God. You see what happens with us? He's just too mature for us. We, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you've raised the bar in this podcast. Uh, it was pretty low for us. Yeah. It wasn't real high to begin with. Fair enough. Hey, for uh, for youngsters watching this, what do you say to them? Respect your parents. Also, I think, I mean, this is, might be biased because I'm a Christian, but I think that you need a relationship with God. Because when I started doing that, I think a lot of things changed in my life for the better. So I definitely think that you should look in, I mean, look into the Bible, look into Christianity, look into going to church. I think that is like number one thing that you can do for yourself if you're not already doing it. And you said when you started doing that, how long ago was that? That was probably about three years ago. Came around three. Wow. So where did you guys play? I know you and Sam played um, youth together. What what organization were you guys with? Was it Benita? It, hard to say. It was kind of just like a mix of teams. Um, Coach Swafford does like a uh, spring league team mm -hmm. in eighth grade. and mixed that up with Sam's dad's team because Sam's dad was bringing in kids too. So I mean, it was kind of a it was kind of a mix of both of those organizations. What makes Sam so good? He's just a competitor, honestly. He's just competitive. He doesn't care who it is or what time it is. Like he'll go, he'll go whenever he's called to. Or if somebody calls him out, and he he's not going to step down. He's going to bring his A game. He doesn't break under pressure. Yeah, I was trying. I tried to explain that last year when I went and saw him play, and and people don't realize, you know, when all the other great quarterbacks just play quarterback, and then they go on the sideline and they look at the iPad, and then Sam's <laughs> out there playing middle linebacker while all those other quarterbacks are looking at the iPad. It's just amazing to watch. And then you see him on special teams too. I mean, he's just a pleasure to watch. I agree. I agree 100. percent I I have and I, I want to word this properly. Okay, as a 
as a Christian going in in a public school, is that tough for you? Are there are there things about going to a public school life that don't square with you, or or is that something that we can all get along? We can all go along to get along. You know, I, I, it's one of those things where I can get along with anybody. I'm not going to judge anybody completely. It's just something that I'm not going to include myself in. So if I were to get an invitation to something that maybe doesn't sit well with me, you know, I re would respectfully decline it. Um, it also helps, though, because they have, like, faith club and everything like that. So maybe during lunch when other people are, they have free time and they're not doing schoolwork and they're maybe doing things that I wouldn't personally do, I can, I have, like, a getaway going to faith club. You know, I can read scripture with people and all that type of stuff. So you, I was kind of surprised when you put your top three out there. I know it was Boise, Nevada, and I think Oregon State. Was it Oregon State? Yes, sir. What was the, what was the reason San Diego State? Because I know they offered you. What was the reason they weren't in the top three? I feel like it was just for the time that they offered me, matching up with the date that I wanted to commit, it just wasn't – I don't feel like I got to know a lot about them and about the school at the same time. And to be fair, well, some people may say – for me, Boise was a no-brainer, but some people may think that I sort of switched Nevada with San Diego State. I mean, Nevada was recruiting me for like the past six months. They were talking to me when like no other schools are talking to me at all. So, I mean, for me, it was just like a loyalty thing because they kind of helped everything get going because, I mean, whether people like to say it or not, like when you have offers on the table, it, it probes other people to offer. Right. So where are you at right now? Because I just seen a big milk truck pull up next to you and just park right there. I, Okay, so my fiance, she's at school right now, and then while she's at school, I always do DoorDash. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah, that, that's the best part of this whole interview. So what? What are you? What? What's the? What are you gonna deliver next? What's the? Uh, is that food or is that? What is that? Food. So what? Oh how, yeah, it's. Food. Well, sometimes it's grocery store stuff or it's auto parts. Like it all depends, to be honest. Oh, I thought it was just food. So, like, if I called you right now and I got you and you could run a, Mc a McDonald's over to us? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you still happen to get me, like, that could happen, but... Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, well, you know what we buried in this whole entire conversation with his commitment to Boise State is college football is kind of imploding around us with all the conference realign uh, realignment. Uh, what does it mean to Boise State? What does it mean to you as an athlete who's committed to a school that... Might be on the move, might not be. We don't know. We'll talk a little bit about that. I think for me in conference, doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, I have Pac-12 schools. I could have went to a Pac-12 school. So wherever they decide to go, that doesn't really matter to me. It's just what I'm getting at school. Um, also, when people have also asked me during my recruitment if they've said anything like that to me, I've never heard any talk of it from any school I want to go visit. That I'm pretty sure they're set on the conference that they're in. But I mean, if they were to move, I don't think that would change. That would I would have a change in heart and want to transfer. Yeah, that was interesting to us because we told, we had Trey on here, and I think a day or two after we had him on, UCLA announced that they were you know switching conferences, and then all of a sudden, you know, you go to UCLA because you want your parents to go to all the you know West Coast games, and all of a sudden, Dang. you might have to play Rutgers, you might have to play <laughs> Penn State or Minnesota, and it just becomes a whole different game. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be crazy seeing them play snow games. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that was something they weren't that's banking on. Hey, uh, let's wrap this up. I want to go back to DoorDash. So tell us, <laughs> how do you get in? What what's the coolest thing? What's the hardest thing about being involved uh, as a DoorDash driver? Uh, I think maybe hardest thing. It depends on where you're at. If you're downtown, you can't find parking. So I try to stay away from there at all costs because I don't have anybody else to park the car for me. So that's that's a hassle. That's a hassle. Um, Sometimes you get picky, you get picky customers. I mean, that's not the best, but I mean, you handle it the best you can. But other than that, I think it's pretty smooth sailing. So you've never swiped a fr French fry out of anybody's package? Uh, well, if people cancel the order and they don't get their food, then like, I mean, I'm not going to let it go to waste, but I don't just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best part of this interview. Waste not one. Oh, night. young man, thank you so much for uh, making the effort to do this because you've been a joy, an absolute joy. <laughs> And uh, uh, no, the pleasure mine. We, we wish you nothing but continued success, and uh, we hope to follow your career all the way to the next level and beyond. And I have a feeling no matter what you end up doing in life, be it football or something else, you'll do well. I think you are a cut above, and uh, we wish you continued success. Thank you. Thank you. All right. In three, two, one. Turn the machines off. The podcast is Oh, I should just tell you, we'll post the raw one today. I'll clip up other segments for tomorrow. Thursday, you'll be clipped out on Good Morning San Diego, so we'll run 
four clips there, and we'll sprinkle it on throughout the weekend. So the the deluge will start, if not later today, the tomorrow. Okay, so you'll start seeing your, and you can find it on PPR's platform and elsewhere. Yes, sir. All right, young man, go in peace. Thank you, Caden. Thank you. Thank you, guys.